Hey everyone! Hey. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. It almost seemed like some type of production when you have someone count down for you and you're getting yourself all together, making sure that you're set. So, I want to welcome you again. Did anybody meet any friends today? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? yeah? Maybe? You friendly? Yes? No? Anyway, now we're going to start up our humorous contest. Is anyone excited? Yeah. And since you are eating and chewing and munching and drinking, I just want to remind you of some things. You probably want to go outside and make a phone call to the boo, the missus, or the mister. Shut your phone down, please. We want to continuously support our people as they come up and entertain us this evening, so we don't want any distractions. So. Without further ado, we're going to reconvene our contest. We're going to bring up our marvelous Toastmaster of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our Madam Toastmaster this contest, Charlene Reinhardt. We are about to begin the humorous speech contest. Before we begin, I will give you the speaking order. Contestant number one, Cynthia Leggett. Contestant number one, Cynthia Leggett. Contestant number two, Phyllis Parker. Contestant number two, Phyllis Parker. Contestant number three, Mike Gouges. Contestant number three, Mike Gouges. Contestant number four, Susan Beasy. Contestant number four, Susan Beasy. Contestant number five, Rachel Clark. Contestant number five, Rachel Clark. Contestant number six, Teddy Rodriguez. Contestant number six, Teddy Rodriguez. We will now proceed with the humorous speech contest. There will be one minute of silence before the first contestant and between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with a green light when one minute is up. After all contestants have spoken, spoken the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. We will now begin the humorous speech contest. Number one, Cynthia Leggett, The Essential Survival Tips for Leadership. The Essential Survival Tips for Leadership, Cynthia Leggett. It was March 2001. I received a phone call, Cynthia, we need you to step up to be the Central North Division Governor. It wasn't on my to-do list, but how could I say no after all that the Toastmasters has done for me? <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, I rose to the occasion. I had wonderful training, but I'm here to tell you the real survival tips. You will need to succeed as a leader. Have you no pants out? Yep. Take notes. <laughs> <laughs> Advocate rule number one, pa, P-I-E. I don't mean apple pie, blueberry pie, cherry pie. I mean humble pie. <laughs> Get used to eating those slices because your first three months, you're going to be doing a lot of I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> I think I can use some help. <laughs> so get used to eating humble pie, pass around the stock. <laughs> Tip number two, don't just know the names of important people in your circle. Get to have a relationship with them. 
Miami Illustrated. I was sitting in my office. The phone rang, private number pops up. I picked it up. It was Joan Moore. Now, Joan <laughs> Moore at that time was the Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training. She said, hello, Cynthia, this is Joan Moore. <laughs> <laughs> I just received a call from one of your club presidents in your division, and there appears to be a slight problem with one of the area governors. I took care of the issue. Next month, phone rings again, private number. I said, could it be Joan Moore? <laughs> I picked up the phone. Hi, Cynthia, this is Joan Moore. <laughs> Have you seen the email that just went out? I think you need to intervene about now. <laughs> I read the email, and sure enough, I guess I did have to intervene. Now, no, I didn't get the call. My area goes, Joan got the call. <laughs> That's fine. Phone rings again. Private number. I just picked up the phone and said, this is Cynthia Leggett, is this Joan Moore? <laughs> what area? What club? What happened? <laughs> 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 He's out of the problem. Don't just know the names of those important people. Have a relationship. <laughs> Hands up, okay? Are you writing this down? Anything. Your favorite song, poem, 
Your favorite face. Snoopy. <laughs> 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 my case of a scripture. Or whatever. So whatever you're gonna need just to ride that wave, because you know what? You're gonna be on the wave. <laughs> so you have it, the essential tips to survive as a leader. So now when you get the call, when you get the call to step up, you're gonna be able to say with a around a rounding clause and the phone to ring, and will you step up to leadership? Division governor, area governor, club president, organize the church picnic, whatever. You'll be able to answer with a resounding yes! <laughs> Maybe have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots.
talking about when I told Ed to suck it in, pull it together. Pull it, pull it together, sir. Ed said, this is my favorite thing. <laughs> this is what we are doing on this Saturday night. We're going to eat these cookies, watch this TV. <laughs>
Contestant number three, Mike Gouges. Mike Gouges, We Fitness. We Fitness, Mike Gouges. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and most importantly, all the ants out there. <laughs> it was August 2010, and I was at my class reunion. I was looking good and feeling even better. <laughs> my classmates told me I had not changed one bit. And I did not disagree with them. <laughs> I was dancing the night away, so silky smooth. <laughs> there came a time when the classmates formed the Soul Train Dance Line. <laughs> now, for those who are not familiar with it, ladies, dance on one side in place, men dance on the other. You work your way down and you pair up with whoever. <clears throat> now the first time down, I had a lady that wasn't moving very much. <laughs> I did not want to embarrass her with my skills. <laughs> I just was a little cool. <laughs> However, the next dance partner I acquired had a different thing in mind. She was doing all kinds of gestures. <laughs> this forced me to unleash my secret weapon. <laughs> the slip. A dance I created back in the day in college named by my Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity brothers. The dance involved rolling my hips side <laughs> Add a few gestures. Yes, <laughs> there you have it. I'll increase my intensity during the slip <laughs> or plan a record by Usher called OMG. Oh my God, he was just singing the part about the O's, singing about the woman of his dreams. And it goes, oh, 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 oh. And I was really getting into it. Suddenly, there was a loud pop. I sang, oh, 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 oh. I created a second dance called the limp. <laughs> when I limped home, I told my wife Sabrina. Initially, she was sympathetic. Oh, honey, are you all right? And then she laughed. <laughs> Show me this dance. <laughs> I 
was unable to. <laughs> Later, I heard her talking on the phone. She was telling someone my business. <laughs> Girl, I don't know how he heard his hip dancing. <laughs> for my slip moves. Oh my God. <laughs> Finally, it dawned on me. We fitness is the answer. Now, I'm no stranger to we. I have one. I'll have you know that I'm a professional tennis player. <laughs> also a professional ball player. <laughs> professional bowler. So, this is right up my roundhouse. Well, for those not familiar with Wii Fitness, it has a platform that's about twice the size of a weight scale. You put it on the floor, you stand on it, you have a sensor on your television, along with your remote, and you do it. Well, I must confess, Wii Fitness is not the positive <coughs> supportive Toastmasters environment. <laughs> In fact, it can be quite sarcastic. <laughs> you have an avatar that's created, like a cartoon character of yourself. Well, the first thing it did was it gave me this mid-section spread. <laughs> I weighed myself the next day on this device, and it said, you've gained two pounds. What have you been eating? <laughs> but the most important thing that I discovered were there were games such as dodgeball, yoga, <laughs> and my personal favorite, hula hoop. <laughs> now at first, I couldn't do one revolution without the hoop falling. <laughs> but over time, I mastered it. So you see, when dieting and exercise is not enough, Work on your Wii Fitness moves. <laughs> Get Wii! <laughs> Madam Toastman. <laughs> Contestant number four, Susan Beasy. This is a song about <coughs> Susan. This is a song about Susan, Susan Beasy. Toastmaster. 
fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. My name is Susan Veazey. I'm going to break the ice by singing you on a journey of my life. Born on a mountaintop in Tennessee. Well, it wasn't Tennessee. It was North Carolina. <laughs> I was born to a sales insurance agent and an accountant. My birth announcement read, Susan Artemis Miller. Nine pounds, eight ounces. Underwritten and accounted for by Lisa and Rex Miller. <laughs> My life started out as one big joke. But in all honesty, I was a pretty shy, little, and serious girl. You're so vain. Bet you think the song is about you. Four months old, I said my first word. It was Susan. <laughs> Not only did I like the sound of my own name, I also liked looking at myself in the mirror. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love ya tomorrow. As a child, my favorite movie was Annie. My mom had to listen to it all day long. At this point in life, she was a stay-at-home mom. Kind of. She owned a Tasty Freeze, so I got all the ice cream I ever wanted. <laughs> Earlier in life, she drifted around, much like Faye talked about, was a legs pantyhose, truck driver, <laughs> potter, all sorts of crazy things. So she decided that she needed to go back and get a college education. This was one of the biggest, most important things that happened in my life because one, it taught me how to lead by example. She figured if she didn't have a college degree, I sure wasn't going to get one. <laughs> Two, that education is important and you always have to have be learning and learning is an essential life skill. Hail to the Redskins, hail victory. My mom finished her college degree. She moved me and my father to Washington, D.C. The day I moved to D.C., I dropped that southern accent. No one's going to laugh at me for that anymore. <laughs> I also learned about cooties. Boys, 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 I like boys in cars. <laughs> well, you get the picture. I didn't believe in those cooties. Go away. <laughs> Drove and drove 
and drove 26 miles to go sell airplane engines. After two years of that 52 mile commute, I decided to take a job downtown with Social Security Administration. The same week I started at Social Security Administration, I started my master's degree at DePaul University and leadership in change management. Dum, da, da, dum, dum, dum. After graduating from DePaul <laughs> University and having worked at Social Security Administration for two years, I decided to quit my job on June 16, 2010. June 17, 2010, started up again at Social Security <laughs> as a presidential management fellow. <laughs> Very honored to be in such a wonder wonderful program for the past two years of my life. <laughs> diamond, you're my diamond. On April 23, 2011, I got to dance my first dance with my wonderful best friend, and now husband. I'm so lucky to have such a wonderful man in my life, and the best part is, he's the funny one. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I've introduced you to me, I hope that you can join me in song and become part of my life. <laughs> so, I'm going to start out, please join. I like the way you walk. I like the way you talk. I like the way you walk. I like the way you talk. Susie Q. <laughs> May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Contestants number five, Rachel Clark. It's all in your head. It's all in your head, Rachel Clark. Before I get started, I want to share uh, with you all something that happened to me over the weekend. So Sunday, as I was evaluating my agenda for the week, I came to Wednesday and saw the contest, so I thought it would probably be a good idea to practice. <laughs> so I asked my boyfriend, babe, do you mind being my sample audience? No response. <laughs> so I thought maybe he didn't hear me, so I, just before I was about to ask him again, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sure, you, you got another Toastmasters thing coming up, go ahead, shoot. <laughs> yeah, just like that, like he was blowing me off. But I wasn't going to let his nonchalant attitude get to me, so I go right into it. I did my whole five to seven to five to seven minute speech within the time frame. So I was feeling pretty good about myself. And really, I was just waiting on him to confirm what I already knew. <laughs> Again, silence. So now that pride started turning into a little bit of nervousness, I started imagining the worst. Oh no, he must be thinking of a way to put it to me really gently. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, babe. I know the contest is in a few days, but I think you need to start over from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> well, instead of letting my imagination run away with itself, I decided I was just going to go ahead and ask them. So, what did you think? I'm not sure if he heard me, but I think he felt me glaring yeah. at him. <coughs> and he said, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you wanted to practice your speech. Just, just give me another minute or two. <laughs> <laughs> and I was almost completely confused until I saw this in his hand. <laughs> He'd been watching the Bears game the entire time and hadn't heard a single word of my speech. <laughs> so now I just have to know, has anybody else in here ever tried to have a conversation with a man when he was focused on something else, only to realize that you were talking to yourself? <laughs> Studies have shown that women 
can detect even the slightest change in tone of voice. So the next time you get in a heated discussion with your wife, and she says, don't take that tone from me. <laughs> and in your head, you didn't think you were raising your voice at all? You were. <laughs> so it's getting to the point in my speech where the men in the room are really wishing I would just get to the point. <laughs> but unfortunately for you, I haven't figured out what it is. <laughs> because once you leave this room, he's going to continue to ignore you while he watches the football game. And she'll continue to take 37 minutes to tell a speech that you could tell in five. <laughs> but I like to think that we have been made perfectly imperfect to complement each other. And moving forward, you can find dealing with the opposite sex less stressful because you know it has nothing to do with them as an individual. It's all in their head. That don't tell you. May we have one minute of silence while the judges complete their ballots. Contestant number six, Teddy Rodriguez, racially ambiguous. <laughs> racially ambiguous, Teddy Rodriguez. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. I would like to see a show of hands in the audience to see if anybody has been to a floral shop lately. Raise your hand. Okay, when you go through that floral shop, <clears throat> when you look at all those flowers, you're just thinking, wow, all these flowers are so pretty. And then you look at the different flowers, the different varieties, and you see a rose, you see an orchid, you see a daffodil, you see that. But how many of you have been to a floral shop and have seen a flower that you just didn't quite know what to make of it? <laughs> you just look at it, you just look at it and just go, Wow, it's really pretty. <laughs> it appeals to me, but I really don't know what it is. The reason why I called this speech racially ambiguous, because that is the story of my life. And the reason why is that I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and then I went through a very traumatic experience in my senior year in high school. My family decided to relocate us to Phoenix, Arizona from Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> See, my friends in Chicago understand me. <laughs> I walked into my senior year in high school, and I will tell you that Phoenix is working on their diversity. <laughs> Not quite there yet. <laughs> so when I walked into my senior year in high school, literally, it was just like out of a movie. I walked in, took my seat, and I saw the eyes just go like this. <laughs> and they just looked at me and they said, you could just tell by their facial expressions. They're like, dude, what is he? <laughs> and then you could tell they were just looking at my build and everything. They said, well, well he's got almond-shaped eyes. That could be anything. He's got brown skin. Okay, that could be anything. <laughs> but look at that hair. <laughs> <laughs> and 
That's when you could tell they were just saying, I think he's a brother, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I think somebody put some cream in that coffee. <laughs> but just remember, no matter how much cream you put in that coffee, you can still see the coffee. <laughs> And so I thought, okay. Then all of a sudden they said, they called my name, Teddy Rodriguez. And so they said, oh dude, he's Latino. <laughs> and the other, the, the other uh, predominantly Mexican population in Arizona says, andale pues, la raza, vive la raza. <laughs> and I thought, wow. So my friend Mia, that I got to know in my senior year in high school, said, well, you know what, though, Teddy? You are just very interesting because you are racially ambiguous. I said, racially ambiguous? In my old neighborhood of Brooklyn, that was almost fighting words to me. <laughs> I was all like, Mia, you're a girl, but what does that mean by that? What do you mean by that? She said, because you can't really guess what ethnicity you are. You could be, you know, something different. And I thought to myself, well, okay, Phoenix, Arizona, hello. <laughs> as I progressed through my last year in high school, as we all know, how many people experimented with your, with your hairstyles all through high school? <laughs> right? I will tell you, I am of mixed biracial heritage. My mother is African American and Native American of the Iroquois tribe in upstate New York. My father is from Cuba, or Cuba, as they say in English. So in Spanish, they call me mulatto. That is what they call me. So within the African-American community, the latest term is biracial. That's the latest new political term, politically correct term. So I'm very, very happy to say, share that with you. But I noticed when I was in high school, I decided, you know what? I'm going to see, because my hair texture will pretty much do anything. I've decided to wear it natural after all these years because I just got tired of the high maintenance. <laughs> but I did though, I went through that whole thing of experimenting with my hair. So at one point, I shaved it all off. Because all brothers go through that thing, man, I'm going to shave it all off. Man. <laughs> and then I noticed, I had so many people come up, so, so many people came up to me and said, what island you from? <laughs> Then I decided to grow it out really long and I relaxed it to where I, where I could wear a ponytail in the back. Because I was watching that video, Keep It in the Closet by Michael Jackson. And I said, that's it for me, man. I'm going to do that look. And I was able to do it. And then all of a sudden, there's a huge Native American population in Arizona. And they're like, oh, what tribe are you from? What tribe are you from? <laughs> So I finally realized that I could be a chameleon. I could be anything that I wanted to be, just depending upon my hairstyle. <laughs> and then I thought, okay. So of course, as I'm getting older, and I'm going into the clubs and having a good time, you know, sometimes they'll come up to you and they'll, you know, they'll just look at you and go, where are you from? <laughs> Anywhere you want me to be from, man. <laughs> racially ambiguous, biracial, however you want to look at it, and as my other brothers and sisters will tell you, what does your older brother Teddy look like? Simply this though, he is definitely an exotic flower and looks like a combination of Tiger Woods with Lenny Kravitz hair. <laughs>
Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. While the ballot counters are tabulating the results, I think it's time to get to know our contestants, don't you? Yeah. Here we have our evaluation speech contestants come lining up and speaking order on the right side of me. Position, and you find yourself that other people are relying on you to 
achieve goals at the same time help others grow. You learn to come out of your shell a little and you step up to the plate. Well, we thank you for stepping up to the plate and serving in this contest. On behalf of the Central South Division, I would like to present you with a certificate of participation. Thank you. So I get out to a lot of concerts. I'm into adventure racing, which is a future international speech if I can ever sit down and write it. And I'm happy to talk about that one later, but there's a lot of contestants that have to speak their stuff and I don't want to get in their way. Well, we'll save that for the international speech contest. We want to thank you for participating in the contest and congratulations. Next, Simma Doll. How are you, Simma? I'm well, thank you. How long have you been in the organization? Six months. Oh, Six wow. months? Wow. wow. What club are you representing? 
I am honored to be part of VIEW Masters, a newly chartered club, and your host for the evening. All right. You've been here six months. What speech are you working on right now? I'm on project number six, whatever that is, I'm doing it. Whatever's next. Yeah. What do you do for a living? Um, I am a consultant and trainer and sometimes speaker, and my area is social media for business development. Right. Nice. Well, congratulations so on serving in the contest, and on behalf of Central South, I would like to present you with this certificate. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Siobhan James, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. Now, you're contestant number six. You probably know the questions better than I do, so let's go. <laughs> 15 years to pull Toastmasters. Oh, 15 years? Wow. 15 years! Oh.
past there since I believe it was July. Two months? Yeah. Wow, wow. July! Wow. Can you tell us what club you are representing? I am a member of Chase Master. Let's go. right on like eyelash etiquette because like, I have seen some outrageous things like you work at Chase and so you know in the lobby area like it's some interesting things walking through this lobby so like I was working on this speech on eyelash etiquette um so I'm trying to pull that together <laughs> I think 
I was uh, motivated to do the topic because I do get annoyed, I'm ignored by my boyfriend when he's playing games and watching. Uh, that, it didn't happen this Sunday, but All right, it right, happened this Sunday. <laughs> Money Masters. What is your ed educational level? I just got my CC. Woo! Special thanks to Lashonda and Charlene for pushing me to get it in four months. <laughs> Besides getting your CC, I know you have a list of other notable accomplishments. What do you do on Wednesday nights? <laughs> I just get my magic mic. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> uh, I am also an aerobics instructor for Fitness Forum Club. I teach cardio, funk, dance, as well as Zumba. Yeah. Well, Teddy, it was a pleasure having you here at the contest. Keep dancing away, and congratulations.
It's about that time. And we will start with our evaluation contest results. Third place winner, drum roll, please. All right, here you go. Please join me in congratulating Maria Monarelli. Thank you. 